Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Kinesis Firehose stream. In a previous video, I talked all about Kinesis Firehose and why it's a useful tool for batching data so that you can process it in large chunks. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up in the console. Uh, so here I am in the main page of the console. I'm going to type in Firehose, click on Kinesis that comes up. Uh, we're going to click on Delivery Streams and we're going to click on Create Delivery Stream. Uh, so the first option is that we need to select a delivery stream name. So let's just say um, this is going to be stock tickers. So maybe this stream will take in a live feed of stock information. Let's move down a little bit. Uh, so now it's asking us to choose our source. Uh, so you can either directly put the Firehose endpoint using the AWS SDK, or you can feed data in using another data stream. We're just going to do it directly through the endpoint in this video. Scrolling down a little bit more, you can also enable server-side encryption uh, if this data is particularly sensitive. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video. I'm going to go to the bottom right here and click on Next. Um, so for processing records, you can, let me scroll down here to show the option. Uh, so you can perform a data transformation step when someone writes data to the stream. You can pipe that data into a Lambda function and transform that data in some way before it finally gets sent to the Kinesis Firehose stream. Uh, so that's what this is for. Uh, you can set up the Lambda so that it takes in a batch of these events and then it spits out the transformation on the other side. Um, it's not suitable for all use cases, but for some of you, it may be important. Uh, maybe you're trying to switch between file formats, but for this example, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, so let's keep on scrolling down. Uh, so this is asking us if we want to convert the record format. I believe what this is saying is that it allows you to switch between JSON if you're writing JSON to the stream uh, into something like Parquet, which is an alternative format, uh, but we're not going to do that in this example. Let's go to the bottom right here and click on next now. And now it's asking us for our destination. So we're gonna pick Amazon S3 for this. Uh, also some other options here, which I, I'm gonna do another video on or several other videos on rather. Uh, so Redshift, uh, Elasticsearch Service or Splunk. Okay, let's keep on moving down. Uh, so at this point, since we selected S3, now we need to pick a destination and we need to pick a destination bucket. So I have a bucket that I created for a previous video, so I'm just gonna click on that. Uh, you can also click on this guy to create a new bucket right now uh, if you don't already have one that exists. Uh, the next section here is for prefix. So you can do um, any kind of prefix you want. So the default here is year, month, day, hour. Uh, there's a bunch of different formats here. If you click on this tab, it'll show you all the different options. Um, but yeah, this is the prefix of all the file names that are going to be created when Firehose puts to S3. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave this as default, so it's gonna use this setting up here. That's good enough for me. Uh, you can also have a special prefix for errors because these get their own files. Um, for me, this doesn't matter either, so I'm just gonna leave this all as default. So we're gonna go to the bottom right again and click on Next. We're almost done. Uh, so S3 buffer conditions. This is a little bit important, so maybe you wanna pay attention for this one. Um, so the way Kinesis Firehose works, especially with regards to S3, is that uh, you can select a buffer size. So, so what this is essentially asking you is how big of a file do you want uh, Firehose to dump to S3? So for instance, if you set this to one megabyte and you have 10 megabytes worth of data that it needs to get through, it's gonna create 10 different files, each of them one megabyte each. But if you set this to five megabytes, that means that it's gonna process the 10 megabytes of data just in two files, each of them being five megabytes. Um, so that's essentially what this means. It's just the, the batch size of files that will get delivered to your S3 bucket in the worst case. Uh, and buffer interval is kind of not the same concept, but slightly similar. Um, so it's the idea that if you don't get this much worth of data in, in this case, five minutes, then automatically write a file. So say for instance, in a five minute period, which is 300 seconds, if we only get two and a half megabytes worth of data written to the Firehose stream, Firehose will automatically emit a S3 file. Um, now that being said, if you have a lot of data that's being written every second, this does not apply. It'll actually output data faster into S3. So it can scale up or down pretty elastically, and that's kind of the neat thing about Firehose. Uh, when you get a lot of throughput to your stream, you have a lot more files that get created, but this is essentially the ceiling. So this is the maximum time you will have between S3 files that get delivered uh, to your S3 bucket. 
Uh, so that's what that means. So pick this number uh, based on what you find appropriate. Um, it depends on your use case again. So, um, you know, there's pros and cons of making this a really big or a really small number, like I said. So scrolling down now, we can enable gzip compression uh, or a whole bunch of different kinds of compression. Uh, also encryption on the delivery to S3. Um, you know, again, based on your use case, this may or not be useful. Uh, moving down, uh, error logging. This is usually a good idea to keep on. Um, keep in mind that you need to have an IAM role that has the correct permissions to write to CloudWatch logs. Uh, so the way I'm gonna do it is I'm just gonna use the suggestion here which is right here. So it's basically saying IAM role needs to be created. So we can choose an existing one that needs to have the right permissions or else you're gonna have some kind of failure at some point in the chain of things, um, either at S3 or somewhere in Firehose. So the easiest thing to do here is just to create a role uh, automatically for you. And if you're wondering what permissions are contained in this role, and maybe you wanna create your own with your own specific uh, settings on it, just go and take a look at the permissions that it assigned this role. This is pretty much guaranteed to work since it's been made by AWS. Uh, so let's click on next now on the bottom right, and it should be a final confirmation step. Uh, this is just asking us to confirm everything. I'm gonna click on create delivery stream now. And sometimes this does take a few minutes. Uh, so I'm just gonna let this, oh, there it goes. Okay, never mind. Uh, so we have this stock ticker, um, Kinesis Firehose stream currently being created. So if I recall correctly now, this is gonna take a little time. All right, guys, here we are, and we can see now that the stock ticker stream is in the active state. So I'm gonna click it and show you exactly how this works, how to kind of emit some data and make sure this is all working correctly. So clicking on the stream name now, um, here we just get some, basically a summary of everything that we did, or if we wanna edit all the options. Uh, I'm gonna click on up here, test with demo data. Uh, so what this will do is just basically start pumping data into your stream. Uh, so I'm gonna click this, and I'm gonna leave this running for a couple of minutes and hopefully in a few minutes, we're gonna see some files that start getting emitted to S3. Uh, so I'm gonna let this go for a little bit and I'll bring you to S3 in a moment or two. All right, so I just fast forward some time. This thing has been running for a good five minutes. So let's give this a stop now and check out what happened. Uh, so if we scroll down and we look at this monitoring tab, click on refresh. Uh, we can see that some data is being pumped into the stream uh, and it's showing you how many requests per second. So now at this point, let's go and check out S3 and see what kind of data is in the S3 bucket. Uh, so going to S3 now, clicking down here on my bucket and here we are. So we can see now that we have some data in here. Uh, so if click on this all the way through, it's obviously separated by uh, year and month and day and hour finally. Uh, so we can see we have one file in here now. So if we just click on open now and check out what's inside here. Um, let's just open this with Firefox. So we can see here a bunch of different records, obviously. Uh, so if we take a look at one individual one, this is one record that got put to the Firehose stream. And as a result of using Firehose, all of this data all gets batched into one file. Um, so if you have a use case where you wanna filter it, or maybe do some batch processing, Firehose is definitely the thing for you. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out my other ones on my channel. I'll put a suggested one on the right here. And also please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.